Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm Pete. Uh, hi. 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 hi, I'm Judah. I'm Bucky. <laughs> and we're the Gallagher family. And this is the inaugural video for the Gallagher family discipleship. Jeremiah, how old are you? We practiced. He didn't do good. He's three. <laughs> Judah is 16 months. And over on the end, Mikey is actually Shauna's younger brother. And he lives with me and Shauna. And he's a college student. He's 21. And this is our family. Hello, everyone again. I'm Pete, and this is Shauna Dollahue. Uh, we are starting to do some discipleship online. And we wanted to share that with others on YouTube and Facebook. One of the ways we want to do that is through a video. And uh, we live in southern West Virginia in a small community called uh, Man, West Virginia. And we actually attend uh, Man Church of God. We're both ordained ministers through the Church of God. And uh, we wanted to share our discipleship process with others. And hopefully you share your processes with us and we learn from each other. We grow from uh, what each of us have. Uh, as we start this video, you've already met the children, so at any time you may hear them yell or scream or run into the room <laughs> and jump on me or jump on Shauna. So just ignore that if that happens. But uh, one of the things that, that we want to talk about is, is, is what is the Gallahue Family Discipleship. And uh, what it is, is our hearts have been set on fire that we want to bring the Word of God back into the home. Uh, past generations raised their families with each father being a pastor and the Word of God being taught in the home and the Word of God being uh, implemented and, and worship taking place in the home and things. And we've got away from that as a church. We farmed out this discipleship process to others when in actuality we need to take ownership of it. Right. The, the mother and the father set the atmosphere in the home. Therefore, um, whatever their attitude is, whatever their outlook is, whatever their wisdom is, the decisions that they make is a, a direct reflection in their children. So we want to uh, just encourage everyone uh, to live by the word, to, to make wise decisions, to uh, walk by the spirit. And uh, so we are just encouraging you to take it back. Uh, live intentionally. Live every day intentionally um, so that you are uh, hitting the mark and so that your children will also hit the mark. And as we, as we get into this process, we want to be completely open and honest with you. It's not an easy process to decide for your family. The thing that we want to encourage you with is persistence. It's something you have to do on a daily basis. It's something you have to live out before then. And you may not have small children. You may just be a husband and wife. Uh, you may be a single individual who has people in their community that they can influence. And these precepts and these principles, hopefully, that come across is something that all of us can apply because the discipleship process is continually giving and taking of others in the Christian walk. Uh, in my life, I need people to sow into my life who help me grow closer to Jesus Christ. I also need people that I'm leading closer to Jesus Christ in my life. So that's the discipleship process. So what's the method? The method that we use in our home is, is the, what we call the E4 process. And we developed this E4 discipleship method through, through youth ministries and things that we've done in the past. But the process basically is a fancy way of taking four words that begin with the letter E and trying to do them every day in our life. And the first of those four words is you want to encounter God every day. So many times what we do is we limit our encounters to God to church services. Yeah. Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, that's when we encounter God. Well, in, the, in, our, in our family discipleship, we want every day for encounters to God to take place. Right. Intentionally making time for God. Intentionally um, um, setting time aside and encountering God. And the ways you do that may look different in every home. Yeah. But some of the processes that, that you can use and, and that work is, is you want to read God's Word. Yeah. That's a definite way to encounter God. Uh, John chapter 1 uh, says that Jesus was the Word in flesh. Yeah. So we want the Word of God. We want Jesus in our home. So every day our family reads the Word of God. Right. You can do that also through prayer. Mm -hmm. right? Pray together. That's what you want to do. Prayer is a great way to encounter God. And then the second method is to exalt God. So we set aside time to make sure that we lift God up. Now, uh, it's obvious that we lift God up in worship or praise. Um, that seems like the simplest form to exalt God. But with every action that we make, that is a good 
that is good and lines up with the Word of God, that is exalting God. That's lifting Him up. Every good deed that we do, every person that we help, every word of encouragement, every uh, person that we pray for, every every person that um, we encounter and we uh, minister to, we're exalting God. Every time we exemplify the character of God, we're exalting Him. And other people are drawn to Him by that exaltation. And one of the greatest ways that you can exalt God in your life is simply by obeying God. And the next E is to edify yourself. Right. And Shauna says that I, I'm, I like to use big words, and I like and I like to be the uh, I guess the linguist. But edify simply means that that you're learning and you're growing. Yeah. And whenever you're edifying yourself spiritually, you're learning and growing about God. Yeah. And uh, we, of course, if you if you attend church, then that process is probably Sunday school, uh, morning worship, uh, discussion with other people. What what we want is that process to be a daily process to where you're growing closer to God in knowledge and wisdom. Right, and we live in a, such an amazing time to where we have so much wisdom even at our fingertips uh, with uh, podcasts and YouTube and books. We have so much wisdom and so much knowledge that we can gain, and most of it is free. Um, <clears throat> but the most import, important knowledge and wisdom that we can gain is always the Word of God, the Scripture. Everything should be tested against the Scripture to make sure that we are edifying ourselves with the truth. Um, so it, we need to always make sure that we have the truth as our foundation, uh, which is the Word of God. So the foundation of any discipleship process is you want to be in the Word of God daily. Yes. Yes. Um, Jesus said that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, we have to understand what his commandments are, which means we have to read the Word of God. We, our love to Jesus is tied to whether we're obedient to him. Right. And that obedience is, do we know what the Word of God says? Yes. Like, say, a three-year-old and a 16-month-old. And a lot of times, uh, that discipleship process for us might be us reading the Scripture then having to stop and break it down, maybe act it out for them, or uh, rephrase it for them, for them to try to grasp and understand what we're talking about. Right. But the process does no good if they don't receive anything from it as well. Right. So we have to take that extra time to do that for them. Right. And then we have to, of course, sow into ourselves as well yeah. in our own study time. And we do that as a family every day. And uh, part of this process is we'll encourage you to read the Word and discuss it every day in your home. Right. And the fourth E um, simply is to engage the world. Um, it is uh, telling others about the love of Christ, showing others the love of Christ, um, giving the gospel message, uh, being um, who God's called you to be, fulfilling your call, whether it be teaching, preaching, singing, uh, nursing, whatever God's called you into, he's given you an anointing. Uh, everyone has purpose. Everyone has a call. Um, so engage the world with that call that God has given you, with that purpose that he has sown on the inside of you. And that engaging process go, go, is twofold. It's, it's, it's engaging the world and engaging the church. Right. Uh, you want to be in a process to where you're, you're spending time with other believers as well. It's so easily uh, to be isolated. Just, just yesterday, Sean and I was talking about how isolated we are because uh, individuals our age that are our friends don't have children as young as we do. Yep. We got started late in life. So we're kind of at a disadvantage with, with friends and, and, and different things. And sometimes we feel isolated. We feel like we're alone. We feel like we don't have individuals that we can share with. But that process is something that, that you have to do with believers as well. And then again, it goes to the world. Uh, your workplace, the marketplace, wherever you're at, you need to be instilling into people the Word of God. You need to be instilling people prayer. You need to be instilling to people that Jesus loves them, that Jesus died for them. That he is the way for their eternal salvation. That's right. So um, that is our E4 method. Uh, those are things that we try to focus on and, and uh, accomplish daily. Um, do we, are we successful every day? No. No, but we're trying. We're trying to be every day successful, a better disciple so that we can disciple our children, uh, that we can prepare them for what God has called them to uh, but what you will see from us over the next months, years, whatever God uh, uh, 
has us to do will be some discipleship videos, uh, some things where we just discuss scripture. And we want to hear, we don't want you just to hear from us, but we want to hear from you too. Uh, I, I want to learn from you. We uh, want to know what you do with your kids. What's successful right. with your children? Yes. How do they learn? Because that might be something that we can share with our children and they learn. Right. And, and we'll share some of our experiences and uh, with the, the, the age that we're in, the the generation knowing uh, so much of social media dictates your lives, we uh, know that it's hard to be personal anymore. Right. Um, so we want to be personal with you. Uh, well, we want to let you know what we struggle with, yeah. uh, things that we're good at, yeah. things you may struggle with. Yeah. But uh, the, the process of discipleship as we move forward okay. is a process of handing it down to another generation. That's right. And what the church has done is somewhere along the way, we didn't pass it along. Uh, we've got youth who, who, who do not know God. Right. They don't know the process. Right. And uh, we've, we're, about to, we're probably about a generation away from losing the church completely. It's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that dire in our nation that the, uh, the process of, of Christianity through salvation and, it, and the discipleship needs to be passed on through families and through communities and through others. So it's important that it starts at home. It's important that it's in your home, that, that the Word of God is in your home, that worship is in your home, that prayer is in your home, that uh, thanksgiving is in your home, that grace is in your home. Um, so we, we will share our experiences, we will share some blogs and lessons, uh, we, want, we want to communicate with you, we want um, you to um, challenge us as we will challenge you, as God challenges us. So um, we hope to see you guys, we hope to uh, communicate with everybody, <clears throat> and uh, here's to an adventure that God has led us on.